Suzanne, thank you very much for giving us time to speak on eCancer TV. It's a pleasure. You're a big breast cancer specialist, so tell me about the hot uh, news around triple negative breast cancer. It is this hot, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think the, the most interesting part of the triple, breast, triple negative breast cancers is that they are not an uh, entity for themselves, but they have a high heterogeneity. So yesterday we heard a s fantastic presentation of Professor Viale, for instance, where he showed us that uh, depending on the starting point, how you analyze breast cancer, you find triple negative breast cancers, triple negative according to the uh, immunohistochemistry, mm -hmm. which are not basal like if you analyze them afterwards uh, uh, according or with uh, the, the help of gene, genome assays. And if you start to analyze breast cancer with the help of genome assays, you find a lot of yeah. basal likes who are not triple negative according to the I, 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 IHC. And I think until now, in any case, this is a very new entity of breast cancer we are dealing with, and we have, until now, not really an idea how to treat these women who show up with this cancer, uh, sort of cancer. But I think the new thing for me on this conference is that even among this group of triple negative, we have a whole different group of, of cancer. Mm -hmm. What's the sort of, is there a typical clinical picture? It's not a typical one. We you know young women? Uh, younger women, they are more aggressive one. Uh, most, uh, we, we know now around 10 to 15 percent of the uh, breast cancers are triple negative ones, so-called triple negatives, whatever it is, because mm -hmm. we had a very nice discussion yesterday about this, even this group, how to, how to call them. And these are young women, these are women with aggressive cancer, these are women with uh, cancers who, uh, who tend to uh, metastasize, uh, metastasize to, to brain and to the viscera, not to the bone like other cancers. And that's why we have uh, a very high pressure to, to, to help these people. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any endocrine therapy for them, logically, because they are negative for estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. It is curious to call something by something they aren't. Mm -hmm. In other words, yes. negative. I mean, yeah. it would be very satisfying if we could find some sort of market. Do you think that, uh, that this is going to be resolved by splitting them up even further? And we'll have two, three different subsets of triple negatives this time next year or the, the ECHO conference in two years? I think so, mm -hmm. because there's a very interesting new group of uh, uh, substances, the PARP inhibitors, mm -hmm. as you know. And these PARP inhibitors work uh, in patients who show up with uh, mutations uh, in one of the uh, best cancer genes, BRCA1, BRCA2. And some of the uh, triple negative uh, cancers uh, have the same, uh, uh, how to say, um, image. They show in the same way, like BRCA1, BRCA2 cancers. And I think for those triple negatives, the PARP inhibitors would be a very nice solution, as it was already shown in one of the uh, studies presented at ASCO this mm -hmm. year in Orlando. Mm -hmm. The concept of um, BRCA1 ness or like or mm -hmm. similarity was raised by Alan Ashworth, who's mm -hmm. uh, got a yeah. lifetime award uh, Today. at the ECHO meeting. Uh, what exactly do you think is BRCA1 likeness or, or ness? Is it real? He's, a li he's in the lab. Is yeah. he? Is he talking to you as a, as a clinician in any way you understand? Um, to be honest, I heard this uh, expression the first time yesterday. So it was really a new one, a new thing for me as well. But I think I, I have an idea what he means if he talks about brackenness. Because this summarizes a whole group of tumors who show in a similar way, probably. And that's why we try to group them. Because I think until now our problem is treating cancers, that we group them all in groups, but we don't really have a clue which might be the right way to do it. So that's why we cannot choose really the proper way to treat them. So triple negative aside, any other really exciting things in breast cancer that you picked up at this meeting? Not yet, but I think we are only on the second day, so I am very curious about the two days to come. I don't want to push you. So you don't need to answer this question. Now, you've been working very hard for the last couple of years to build a new breast cancer team. You know, we talk very glibly about multidisciplinary teams or multi-professional teams. And so. How difficult is it to actually create? 
It is difficult, I can tell you. But I think the most important part of this is to find people you can talk to. It's all on the level of personal relations. So if you find somebody in the department of pathology, for instance, you trust, then you have already the very first glue you know, of, of your unit. And then if you find another guy, a woman or a man who whom you really can talk to about radiotherapy, then you have the third guy into your boat. And I think you have to pick up people in the right way, and then you can find a superb unit. Mm -hmm. Surgery is the, is the cornerstone of the European Institute of Oncology's uh, mm -hmm. multi-professional units, as you know. Is it, uh, is it easy, difficult to get the, the, the surgeons on board? This is not a problem in Germany, because in Germany, as you know probably, the gynecologists do the surgery of breast cancer by themselves. So we don't have really a, a, a tight relations to the surgeons, mm -hmm. only to the plastic surgeons, of course. They come into the boat if you have to offer a mastectomy to a woman, then a plastic surgeon should be, to my mind, in in the very beginning, uh, be, uh, be part of the team for the, the patient as well. Mm -hmm. Sarah Faithful was uh, speaking to eCancer TV uh, earlier today about, uh, she's the president of the European Oncology Nurses mm -hmm. Society, and she was saying that she's quite concerned that in Germany there are signals that, that the role of the oncology nurse is being uh, devalued and, and, and downregulated, and in some places mm -hmm. there is an attempt to, to put less well-qualified uh, mm -hmm. personnel into the role of the oncology nurse. Uh, and, and she points out that this is in contrast to many of the neighbouring countries in, in Europe where mm -hmm. the opposite is happening and we're down-regulating doctors <laughs> and promoting oncology mm -hmm. nurses to do quite a lot of the work and they do it very adequately that, uh, that let's say the less the more junior doctors used to do. Mm -hmm. Is this real is it, or is this just a worry about a trade union? It's a very interesting question to be honest. Uh, I mean my experience is that the number of doctors goes down in Germany. That uh, I am working at a university, so the regulations, the economic regulations, are extremely strict. And uh, I didn't see until now that oncology nurses uh, had to go. If this would be the case, it would be dramatic because these women have enormous experiences uh, with treating patients. You know, all these questions of side effects are nearly unknown to doctors. I, you know, just uh, say it in this way. Uh, to point it out, but I think really, I mean, the daily treatment, chemotherapy, and everything is done by oncology nurses, and so that's why they play an enormous yeah. important role in my mind. Good, I'm reassured. Psychosocial uh, input into your team? Which one? Psychosocial oncology input into the team. Is this quite yeah, important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. And, yeah. and how do you do that in your, in your team? Um, every patient who comes to surgery comes to the hospital to the surgery, not as an outpatient, uh, on an outpatient basis, but if they come into the hospital, they see one uh, psych uh, oncologist, everybody. Wow. So they get the information where to go to if they really need help. Mm -hmm. And do your patients get on the internet and uh, find information for themselves, or do they trust you? <laughs> Depending on, on their age and depending on how, how they manage the computer. Mm -hmm. I have some of my patients who are very well informed. For others, my, I personally wrote a, a patient information brochure, for instance, where I put everything which I have on the internet also in a small brochure, which you can read, which everybody gets if he comes to, to my office, for instance. And there are other organizations who have these leaflets, which are very helpful, I think.